How can you forget me? No one has stood up for you more than I have. No one has held you down, backed you up, been a ride or die like me. I am black woman. Black woman is dying in the streets and black woman is forgotten every day. Say her name. Do you know it? Do you remember it? Is she even human to you? Black woman wakes up. Black woman does her job, takes care of her kids, stands for her man, protests in the street, fights injustice. Black woman is tired. Black woman is tired of carrying your weight on her shoulders. That's what black woman does for you every day and you forget her. Ain't I a black woman? Don't I bleed? Don't I bear children? Say her name. Her name is not black woman. That is one part of her identity, but she is so much more than that. Say her name. I will wait. You don't remember it, do you? I am black woman. And if you want black woman to keep going out there and fighting your fight, fighting our fight, this fight, then do not forget me. Say my name. Another day, another child has lost a father because of the cruelty and hatred, because of the pride and the fear. They see us. They see our men, large and intimidating, because they can't take out the time to know who they really are. Another child loses a father to racism and anger. My father is a wonderful man, respectful and honest, kind and gentle, a man after God's own heart. I wonder if they kill him, shoot him in cold blood in the streets, is that what they'll see? Will they see the pastor who shepherds his flock or the father who takes care of his children, the husband who loves his wife, the man who always takes the time out to help others, or will they dig? Dig up his grave to find the files older than his oldest child, to find the thief, the drunk, the party animal, so they can diminish him because it's not just like this system to always make the black man the reason for his own demise, no matter how long ago his wrongs, no matter how few or how many, how recent or how far gone. Leaving us, the children of the black men, mortified. There is so much PTSD in the black community and we suffer more every day. So please, don't take my daddy away. I remember as a child, the most exciting day of my life was the day I ceased to be an only child. Not even thinking about how his future could be looking down the barrel of a gun. My brother was born and I was excited to have someone to play with cute, dark skin, coarse hair like the rest of us, but came into this world deemed unworthy. From the moment he came out of the womb, who'd have thought that one day he'd celebrate a birthday and it'd be the last time he was considered adorable. That once he hit a certain age that he'd suddenly become a threat. And for no other reason than he grew up too much in the wrong skin. Beautiful skin. More beautiful than the night and all the stars in the sky, set down from heaven, made in his image. Yet still not given the respect earned. Growing into the fear of the bullet in the back of the head from any angle. 
black man can't mess up in this world because one wrong move can lead to a death sentence. All it takes is one time, one mistake, no second chances. And sisters, mothers, children are left crying. This was the hardest poem for me to write. Because my brother has always meant everything to me. And it feels like everything that could be said was already said before I got here. But somehow I still found words and they never seem like enough. If you take my brother from me, Lord only knows what I might do to you. There are a lot of things I'd like to remember. Memories I'd like to keep. Like our first dance, our first kiss, our vows, the first trip we ever took together, the first time you said, I love you. And when you're gone, I want it to be after a long life where you held me tight every night. I don't want my last memories to be of a cold body, bleeding, begging for life, gasping for air, shot dead on a nice day simply for existing. For being a black man in a world that hates you, being in the wrong place at the wrong time and the responsibility becomes mine to explain to our children why. Why daddy isn't coming home tonight. That's not something I ever want to have to do. This, this is what it's like to fear. Fear for someone so dear to you to constantly be looking over your shoulder because even though we're older, things have stayed the same through the years. In fact, they've gotten worse. And I don't like thinking of him lying in a hearse and it hurts just to think about. I know it's possible. I don't know others' pains personally, but my heart goes out to them. As history continues to repeat itself and it's a mystery how we can continue to be ignorant for both the loved and the unloved of our people because of this color. This color painted on us by God as he constructed us in his image, on his canvas that we're blessed with, but it's unappreciated because this world does not love us. Because our people are the ones on hot coals and our men and women are losing their souls to the bullets of racism, I have had to watch my husband sit and ponder what he would do if he ever had to come face to face with the barrel of a gun pointed at him because he was viewed as a threat simply for living and I, I never want to carry that casket. From his body hitting the pavement out of my reach, I can't get my mind to stop replaying these images. And what is to be unknown And I want it to be known that it affects me. And to show it to those who can do something about it. I don't want to lose him in this world of sin and irrationality before me that makes me fear what can happen next. Will I too one day have to explain why daddy's gone? Please for our future. Please for our children. Please. Little black boy whom I hold in my arms. He cries, loud and commanding, demanding my love and attention, my care and my affection as he becomes my world, my sunshine. So small and innocent, so sweet and cute. Come home with me where I will protect and care for you. And to the day you grow too old for mommy's kisses. Little black boy young and fire, climbs everything he sees. Look, mommy, he says. Look at me. Take him to the grocery store and all the ladies tell me how cute he is. Look at his hair, it's so pretty. 
Look at that face. It's so cute. He's so sweet. He's so cute. But I wonder how long before cute becomes careless. I wonder at what age does my cute little man become a big threat? Baby boy growing older. Nightmares of what might happen. Little black boy one day be all grown up. Causing fear for his appearance, for his life, the nightmares. Little black boy I hold in my arms. His cries would be loud and commanding, demanding my care, my love and affection as I dress his wounds and try to distract him from the pain and the blood collecting in a pool on the ground as I'm losing my world, my sunshine. Look, mommy, he says. I was supposed to protect him. I was supposed to keep him safe. And my eyes fill with tears before I wake up. Sweet little black boy, four years old, knows nothing of the world. Just toys, games, and mommy. But being mom of a little black boy, of fear, is trusting God for his future, is knowing that one day we will have to have the talk. No, not the talk about the birds and the bees, the talk about how to best avoid death while minding his own business at a traffic stop and knowing that one day I won't be able to protect my little boy anymore. Dear black sisters who may be feeling down, feeling underappreciated, or like the weight of the world is on our shoulders, first of all, it is. And it's time to drop it on the feet of those who will make us feel less than, who call us names, hurt us for self gains, kill us, fear us, and want to be us. But no one can truly handle what a black woman has to deal with. Because is it not like black women to be strong even in the hardest times? To ignore our own pain for our men, for our children, or for everyone else? Are we not dying too? Was Sandra Bland not murdered in cold blood while sitting in a jail cell? Was Breonna Taylor not gunned down in her own home? We are also under attack. No one has fought for our people like us, been angry like us, protected our children, protected our men like us. It's time to drop the strong black woman mask and moniker to the curb, to fall to our knees and cry out, what about us? What about us? We are dying too, simply for daring to be. Our people are in danger. And we, we are the key. For without the black women, our people are no more. And they know this. We cry out for justice. We scream for hope. Black sisters, you are beautiful, strong, magical, and brave. And this is a reminder that we cannot do it alone. We need help. And that time to get it, to keep it, to demand it, is now. They robbed us of our culture and they robbed us of our rights. Then they turned around and realized they couldn't keep us out of this fight. So next they turned around and tried to rob us of our people. They gun us down in the streets and then they go back and try to pray at the steeple. They think they got us back against the wall, but what they don't seem to realize is it is them who will fall. They've tried to make us think we're nothing, that we are dull and classless. But what they don't know is like a phoenix, our people will rise again from the ashes because enough is enough and senseless violence won't cut it. It's time for us to rally up. They can't keep taking things from us. Enough is enough. We will come together and yes, even pray. But it's come time for us to take back our day. 
No more looking the other way and simply turning the other cheek. It's time for action. Your future now is going to look dark and bleak. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean more violence or killing. But I mean we'll come together. And when we do, the results will be chilling. We'll take this country that we built with our hands and teach you about justice until you understand that our color is not what makes us weak. And in fact, it makes us strong. And if we were all to come together, you could do us no wrong.